hey y'all welcome back to my channel i'm tara with sewing the city and today we're doing the second week of garden tour garden tours for the spring slash summer garden season and i'm so excited so without further ado let's get started because it is hot out here so if you come this way you can see that i have finally gotten some sweet potato slips in this bed i think i mentioned last week that i was going to get some sweet potato slips but i was having some trouble you know finding where to get them um because i didn't have time to start them myself so i went ahead and ordered some online and they are here now i had i think five but now i only have three because obviously when things are shipped you know in the mail they can become kind of weak so three out of the five survived as you can see one two three so i'm pretty happy with that and these are the regular sweet potatoes last year i did the purple and they're good but like i could just do regular sweet potatoes you know i don't have to have purple so let's go now you're in this bed and i said last week this is one of my dad's one of my dad and i's uh most important raised beds because we're trying to focus on one particular thing this year okay and that is watermelon watermelon is important to us we struggled with growing watermelon the first year we did all right then last year was just like oh so this year we're praying and doing our work to make it better this year so we put our watermelons in one of two raised beds this is the first one you can see they're doing pretty good this is the watermelon plant that's a watermelon plant this is a volunteer winter squash okay um it volunteered in the compost that we use um these are some marigolds i have a row of marigolds all started from seed by me and look at that do you see that i hope that gets pollinated oh i really do we've already seen some bees out here okay that look they've been flying real close to me um, so they are out here and we just hope they they come on over here and and pollinate um, And then this right here is another marigold obviously the beautiful flowers um, And then you have two more watermelon varieties. I think the two varieties in this bed are Jubilee and uh, Crimson sweet, I think those are the two varieties now this variety right the the big one the big watermelon that actually has some blooms on it. My dad got that from the store. I'm not sure what variety it is. But we like big watermelons. So I'm pretty sure whichever variety it is, it's the longer oval shaped watermelon probably. Sorry y'all, loud air, <laughs> I mean helicopter. I live in the middle of the city so you, you hear stuff with it all the time. But I think they're doing pretty well. Um, I have to remind myself to fertilize my plants. I forget to fertilize, so I think that'll be helpful in making sure they grow at a faster pace. And the fact that we're finally getting some um, warm night temperatures, I think that'll be really good too. So this is doing pretty good. Let's look at the other bed. Okay y'all, so this is the second watermelon focused raised bed, if you will. And these are doing quite well. Um, now I'm not even sure, I think that's a watermelon. That, that might actually be a volunteer tomato plant, okay? I know my plants. And it looks like a volunteer tomato. We get lots of volunteers. We, we put a moon and stars right there. But I think that's a volunteer tomato. But this is an actual watermelon. It's gotten really big. This is the moon and stars. Um, I need to put a picture on the screen. Because some of y'all are like, what is a moon and stars watermelon? I've never had it before. But it's really pretty. It's literally a dark watermelon with like yellow spots that looks like stars. And then this is a big watermelon. This is a... Um, I think it's a yellow, uh, yellow gem, sweet watermelon, something like that. I planted that for my daddy because he liked yellow watermelons. So I planted that for him. And I'm looking at this bed. I think we do have a few volunteer tomatoes in this bed. Because we put tomatoes in this bed last year. Cherry tomatoes. I think this is a tomato. I think this is a tomato, and I think that's a tomato. I think these are volunteer tomatoes, now that I'm thinking about it. And of course you have some, you know, um, little, probably some weeds or something. I do have to pull that up, it's no big deal. That's another watermelon plant that's doing really well. So we have three watermelon plants in this bed that are doing quite well, and I'm really happy about it. So, okay, you can come around here. 
Oh, this is one of my favorite sections in the garden. Well, all of my sections in my garden are my favorite. But this is one of my favorite as well. Because you can see, this is the tomato section. Like, we have all of these beautiful tomatoes. I think we have nine total over here. Um, and I'm really happy about it. All of these are grown from seed by me inside of my house. And they're looking beautiful. And we are finally, finally getting some blooms on these plants. You can see, excuse me, you can see there's some blooms, some blooms, some blooms. And one of these plants actually has um, tomatoes on them. They're actually behind the, the cameraman. Isn't that beautiful? So beautiful. I think that might be the first plant that has actual tomatoes on them. Uh, it's kind of like a little jungle back here, so it's hard for me to get in there and really see. But I think that's the first tomato plant in this section to have tomatoes on it. Now, all of these tomatoes that I'm growing so far, at least the ones back here, are beefsteak. They're big, meaty beefsteak tomatoes. I'm growing a variety, like from darker, savory ones to... Uh, more sweet variety so I'm really excited about it okay some of these varieties I think all of these varieties I've never grown before but they're supposed to be very flavorful so I'm really excited about it okay let's keep going we can start with the fruit tree sections and this is behind me so I think I said last week that only one of our fruit trees is producing fruit I mean, and it could be worse. We could have no trees producing fruit, but we have one of our trees producing fruit, and we have about uh, seven, I don't know, over seven fruit trees. It's quite a bit. Now, I know that our, my issue is, is that this past winter, we put all of our fruit trees, even the native fruit trees, in the greenhouse. That was a big mistake. We've done our research, and some of you all have commented and said, you know, some of them probably should have been left out over winter because they need a bit of cold hours. Some trees need to get cold for a certain amount of time in order for them to produce fruit, and you are absolutely right. Like this peach tree, this plum tree, that apple tree, they need some cold hours, and they didn't get it, so they're not producing fruit. But we've learned our lesson, my dad and I, and so we are going to make sure that we leave it out in the winter so that it can get some um, you know, cold hours so that this time next year, maybe we'll get some fruit. Okay. And you're looking at one of our peach trees right now. Now the, the trees behind this, uh, behind us, uh, those are one of our citrus trees. And if I'm being honest with you, uh, it's never even flowered before. Uh, my dad had to cut down the limbs because it, you know, it got really cold this winter and half of the tree died. So he cut down the limbs and I don't know. I mean, I do need to fertilize it and maybe we'll actually get some blooms this year, but it's kind of hard to tell. It's kind of hard to tell, but that is one of our citrus trees. You can come over here. This is another one of our citrus trees. There's, there's actually two more of our citrus trees. One, two. Um, like I said, they, they've never even flowered before, so we're just gonna have to be patient and um just keep my eye on it fertilize it and and keep my eye on it this is my hibiscus tree that i showed you last week we just have it out here because we're thinking maybe it'll come back like a part of the tree does still like it has buoyancy or whatever the word is but then you have parts of it that's like this and it's just tearing apart so I, I think it's safe to say that it's probably done for. This was the hibiscus tree from last year. I might put a clip in here to show you what it looked like last year. Uh, but it's, it's seen better days, y'all. We, we had it in the greenhouse, and that didn't even help because it got so cold. That's our blueberry bush. that had It had some blueberries on it. There were some weeds all up in there. That's the blueberry bush. I think when it's red like that, it means it's getting either too much water or not enough water or it's lacking nutrients or all of the three. I don't know, so we shall see. But let's keep moving on. And this is our uh, peach tree right here. No, sorry, this is the plum tree. This is the plum tree. Like I said, it needs to stay out in the winter. This is the apple tree. 
I should have stayed out in the winter. But this is really cool. This is our second peach tree. This one, thank God, has peaches on it. And not only does it have peaches on it, it, it to be harvested. And we're gonna harvest them right now. My dad's gonna harvest the ones that need to be harvested, because he knows. Look at that, that's the first one, yay! Whoa. That's the first one. Second one, whoa. Peach cobbler on the way. And tomorrow's Memorial Day. Whoa. Oh, uh, one of them split, y'all. <laughs> I think that's we'll right. Go ahead and open it up. We can see. Whoa! Wow! Are there any more? Oh, let's see. I think it's one up top. Want me to get that one if if you, if you can hold it? Uh, yeah. that wow! That's it. I believe so. Okay. Wow, y'all, look at all of these peaches that my dad harvested. One of them split, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, wash this off, and my dad's gonna do a taste test, okay? Well, I just washed this off. They're, they're small, but the flavor is awesome. Oh my mm. gosh. Juicy. Wow, they taste so good. It is so sweet, y'all. <laughs> it tastes what? like candy. And juicy. Okay, y'all, so now we are done with the tree section, the fruit tree section, and we're gonna go up to this raised bed over here. Wow, so this is our squash raised bed. Um, and these squash are looking really good, knock on wood. Okay, I'm really happy about them. We're growing uh, three varieties of squash, and I'm gonna tell you which, which they are. Okay, so these are the zucchini squash. Okay, one and two. Last year, I made a mistake and grew all yellow squash. Not to say that I don't like yellow squash, but I don't want to just only have yellow squash. I do prefer zucchini. So we, grew, we are growing two zucchini squash now, and they're getting really big. I think they will get blooms soon, because I think I see the little things that will turn into blooms. So I'm really happy about that. Like these will eventually turn into blooms. So, you know, I just got to be patient. Um, that's what these, they, these both are. And then that one right there is a butternut squash, okay? Right there. Let me tell you, I've never grown butternut squash in my life. But I do know that I love butternut squash, especially in soups and stews. Um, it's very hearty for the winter time. And so, and it's very expensive in the store. It's so expensive in the store. So I said, why don't I try and grow it? We'll see. But right now it's looking really good, okay? Now this marigold, guys, I've got to put it in the ground. There's no reason why it's not in the ground. I just haven't done it yet. That, that's, you know, but I did grow this myself, okay? And I labeled this wrong. It, this says tomato. It's actually, yeah, it's, it's a marigold. But I started inside of my house. That's some dill. I bet that smells so good. I read online that dill is also a good companion plant, so I put that in here along with the marigold and the nasturtiums. You see these nasturtiums? These are also great companion plants. Now we talked about companion plants. Companion plants are plants that repel the bad pests and bring in the good pests for your, for your plants, okay? This is a really big nasturtium hidden in between these squash, you see? It's really big and pretty. And this big squash is a, uh, a yellow squash. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, a yellow squash. So, really big and beautiful. And these, like I said, these are just now getting the, these will turn into squash blossoms eventually. So, it's coming along, y'all. It's coming along. And this white powder on here, this is diatomaceous earth. We're, we're trying to keep this on here because, uh, you know, Companion planting is good, but sometimes you have to use a little reinforcements. And that's what diatomaceous earth is. It's, 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 it's reinforcement. Okay. 
Now this is our cucumber bed. Now I don't know why this cucumber here is leaning over the way it is. Maybe it needs some water or something. Um, what do you think, cameraman? Well, I don't think we're gonna put a trellis up and let it go. Okay, cameraman says it's probably just needs a trellis. He's probably right. Um, and it is hot out here. It might need a little bit of water, but I'm not gonna water until tomorrow morning because I water two days in a row. So this is our cucumber bed. Um, so I have, uh, I think, three different varieties of cucumbers in this bed. These here is a silver slicer. This one and this one down here. Um, silver slicer is such a refreshing cucumber. Even my dad loves it. Um, I grew it for the first time last year. And I might put a little video of what it looks like in here. It's um, silver, right? It's literally silver. Um, and it's, it's long and sweet. So sweet and watery. Um, and just so delicious and it's easier to grow. It's more resistant to blight and pests So when you see the other cucumbers eventually they'll kind of die off but the silver slicer will stay around longer So I have two silver slicers one. Uh, I think this is um, Boston pickling. It's basically a thick prickly one. It's very savory. It's very savory and really good and then this one over here is a muncher now, I'm not sure what the muncher really tastes like because the muncher is more so, uh, I've never had it before, but I grew it because people online say it's really, you know, it's just nice to have because it's super small and you can snack on it because it's really small. So I'm going to grow it. And then there's a little bit of weeds in here, but I also have some nasturtiums. Nasturtiums and marigolds, all grown from seed. Everything on this bed is started from seed. But yeah, that's this bed. This is so thick, this marigold. It's got so big. Big, big, big. And then, right here, guys, this is the strawberry plant that volunteered and is growing out of the cracks at the bottom of this raised bed. Now, last week, I did have a baby strawberry, right? And I said to myself, I'm like, Taryn, you know, you can just harvest it tomorrow, right? So I came out here like the next day, right? And then it looked like something had eaten it. Oh, cameraman says he sees one. Oh. There it is. Look at this. Okay, y'all. This is a little strawberry. Give it a few more days and it'll, it'll be ready. Thank you, cameraman. See more? <gasps> That one ready? What do you think, cameraman? Nope, not yet. Not yet. All right, so give it a few more days and we'll have two strawberries. We're gonna get those strawberries, you understand? Now those are a little bit smaller, but that's probably because this is a volunteer. Like, it's not the thick strawberry kind. I know it's much of the skinny, which is fine with me. I don't care, I'm not picky. So this is our, um, these are getting so thick, y'all, whoa. These are really thick. I might have to try and get it back in the trellis. But these are uh, two more of our tomato plants. So we, we're growing so many tomatoes, um, it's crazy. Um, but these are another beefsteak variety and they are the dark, they're like a, a dark purple variety. Never had them before, but they're supposed to be really good. The plants are getting nice and thick. They're getting some blooms, finally, some, some flowers. I like to try and shake them myself to see if they can get hand pollinated. Um, but you know, we have some bees out here. because, like I said, they get real close to us. So just gotta be patient. Hey, we have flowers. So before you get the fruit, you get the flowers. So I'm happy about that. This section right here, um, we have a few empty raised, um, we have a few empty grow bags, but that's okay. Um, most of these, and these grow backs are bell peppers um, and they are different varieties of bell peppers. They are yellow bell peppers or some people call them sweet peppers, yellow, orange, and red. Okay, so it's a mixture all up in here um, and you see this white powder on there. Like I said, sometimes you have to use reinforcements, which is diatomaceous earth uh, to keep those nasty pests off. And so in the midst of all of this, um, like on this one, uh-huh, look something's eating this. I gotta use some more reinforcements. 
because it's been eaten by something. So I'm going to take care of that. But it's still a big plant. But in the midst of these bell peppers, I have a few different plants. I have this sunflower. My dad pointed it out to me. This sunflower is growing in my, uh, you know, driveway, really. The, the, this is like uh, an extended driveway that we're planting on. So it's, it's growing on the, the, the rocks in the driveway, which is so cool. I did not plant that. Um, and then you have, let me walk in between here. This right here is a celery, which is so cool. I've never grown celery before. So I'm excited to see how it does. Um, and like I said, I still have a few empty grow bags. I wanna put some herbs in those empty grow bags. Maybe some chamomile, maybe some thyme. Um, so, so, but I'll do that maybe tomorrow. I have some other things besides uh, bell peppers. I also have some beans. These are all different varieties of green beans. So these are like they're all bush varieties of green beans. Green beans can be grown in the uh, like pole version or the bush version. These are bush. And they're like, they're either blue lake or tender green or something like that. So they're doing quite well as you can see. Um, I think this one though is getting, I'm gonna have to use my reinforcement y'all. But, it, but it, it's doing pretty good. Um, gotta stay on top of the pests. But like I said, these empty ones, I wanted, I wanted to do some black eyed peas, but I still gotta find some black eyed pea seeds. So some of these empty bags will be black eyed peas and some of them will be herbs, like chamomile and thyme. Now look at this section. This section is doing decent. Um, I told my dad I might want him to stay on top of the um, watering for, for this section. Because sometimes I just overwater. Like I can't help it. I just overwater. Like I just I just can't help it. So I told my dad I would try to see if he could, you know, take control of the watering this maybe when he gets off of work. Because you know the sun doesn't go down until like right before 8:30. And he gets off work before that. So like maybe he can water this little section right here. Because I do overwater sometimes. But I'm just going to be patient with myself. We still have tomatoes growing on this. As you can see, all these beautiful tomatoes. Thick beefsteak tomatoes. My dad and I didn't start these, so we don't know the variety in particular. But we know they are all beefsteaks because of how big they're getting. So, they're looking pretty good, y'all. You know? Um, some of them do need to have bags on them. But they're looking pretty good. And, um... I just gotta stop overwatering. I gotta stop overwatering. I do. I really do. But they're looking good. Okay, y'all. So the last section I'm gonna show you on this wonderfully hot day is the fence line. My dad is such a great garden helper. He did this all himself. He put down what I think is called um garden fabric or landscape fabric he put that down then put this beautiful mulch down then individually put these flowers in here okay you see those small ones that's milkweed the super small ones that there, there's some herbs like lavender and rosemary that's doing decent this isn't doing great but this is doing really good and then it, it literally goes all the way down all the way down and down there you can see some like um marigold and that beautiful red plant down there um absolutely beautiful so i'm just i'm very happy with this um my dad did all of this himself i'll walk down and show you where it ends so it ends down here it ends down here with this beautiful red plant that my dad got me it's called a heart-to-heart -heart caladium. Very pretty, a caladium. The flowers are still relatively small, so I have some ways to go. And I still want to put some um, sunflower seeds over there if I can. I probably have to put the sunflowers somewhere else. I might keep them in this thing, or my dad might plant them in the ground. Either way, these two are going along the fence line over there as well. Um, get off of there. 
these two are going along the fence line at some point as well um these strawberries i'm going to put these strawberries in like a garden planter i want to like leave it hanging on this thing if i can get like a garden planter that can just hang on this deck would be perfect for these strawberries and then i have this i have this um what is this what is this what is this? a mint this is some kind of mint that i have that also needs to be in a planter as well you know what and i know i said that that was the last section but i lied this is the last section so over here this is our cinder block section that my dad did as well i'm very grateful for um someone told me the name of the now this might be i'm about to pull this up i'm about to pull this up i think this might be a weed or something i had taken this down but it grew back fast already these are is a type of plant that attracts hummingbirds i think they've just done all they can do because um the flowers are kind of dying off but that's what these are um these three one two three and i think this is bee balm i have taken that out but of course it's growing back i did plant some cherry tomatoes in, in this bed but um i think there's so many weeds that i didn't really do well on this side so i'm gonna take the weeds out like these weeds out and replant the cherry tomatoes i'm gonna pull this up because i don't know what that is but i don't want it right there i'm not sure what it is i'll use my plant app to tell me what it is and then of course i had put some more sunflowers in here but there's so many other weeds that i don't think the sunflowers could do as much but i do know that these right here are that's okra right here and right here that's okra so i am excited for that because that's one thing that i do love to grow i love growing okra okay so i do need to do a little uh, cleaning up in the cinder block bed just to make it look a little bit better but it's doing all right and then that um pear tree behind us um it hasn't really changed from last week still looking beautiful still looking tall but no blooms um and someone uh, commented last week saying has it ever bloomed before yes it has it's bloomed pretty much every year that we've had it and it's even produced some fruit but the thing is, we just haven't gotten any yet. That doesn't mean we won't get any. Uh, it's just we, we, we normally have flowers by now. But we'll have to see. Um, last winter was really cold, so we'll just have to see. Now, that was officially the last section, okay? So, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, you can share this video if you feel inclined to do so. I would greatly appreciate it. And don't forget, no matter how stressful your day is, no matter what you're going through, remember, just keep sawing, okay? Thank you. Bye.